everybody. Welcome to Tarot the Stashway, episode 23, where we're revisiting the court cards. And I am freaking thrilled to have Chris from Elemental Cardamancy joining me. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You doing, yeah. Well, okay. So Chris and I, we were in a reading session together yesterday. And I was planning on doing revising the court card or revisiting the court cards. And I'm like, you know, Chris is off tomorrow. I wonder if I could ask him. Well, I got a very nice comment from him on Messenger saying, hey, I, I'm going to watch your re <laughs> revisiting the court cards. And I'm like, you want to join me? I'm like, going, oh, my God, this was <laughs> it was it was incredible. So um, <clears throat> so Elemental Cardamancy. Uh, his links are below. I am Tarot Stash. Thank you for being here. Please make sure that you like, uh, share, and subscribe to both of our channels. This is for entertainment purposes only. Do not make decisions based upon what we say. Seek professional assistance, really. Um, and um, so, Chris, you're off today. Yeah, I was. Um, because it's Easter Monday, we get this is like one of the few weekends where we get both the Friday and the Monday off. Okay. Um, so yeah, day off work today, which has been nice. We've been out um, looking at TVs because I want to get a new TV for my upstairs living room. Uh huh. Um, and I've basically told them that nothing less than 65 inches will do, which I know sounds extremely rude, but. But we're talking in TV terms here. Um, but uh, yeah, I just had, we've got like a, one of the old TVs that have, that's just always sat up in this room because we never use it. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it, it's, it's where I want to sit and watch all, and like basically stream my Tarot Stash YouTube channel lives too. So, of course, I need, I need to have your face in 65 inches, Gerald. <laughs> wow. And, I mean, Jamie, avert your gaze. That'll make my tiny hands look even like normal size. Like normal size, exactly. The like normal size. Do. So, but anyhow. Well, are you going to game on that as well? Do you do gaming on that as well? Sandy does gaming. And if he starts setting up his consoles on the new telly, then there's going to be big trubs because where Sandy goes, mess follows. <laughs> and this is the this is the tidy living room. But it's downstairs. Oh, it's the messy okay. living room. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you for being here. Seriously, it's wonderful. Um, oh, let's say hi to some of the best chatters because we are, this this whole show is, um, Tara the Stashway started um, two years ago, almost two years ago. It'll be two years in August. So this is episode 23. And it started with the, the first time I talked about the court cards because everybody is scared of court cards. Nice. Yeah. And I'm like, going, I don't think they're scary. So, but anyhow, best chatters. Liz and Awe is here. Plucky heroine. Hi. Hi. I love it. Beth is like going Gerald and. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Beth. And Jamie is in the house. Let's revisit the court cards. Absolutely. And um, Nancy, a Crohn's intuition. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Best chatters. Whoop, whoop. Oh. Um, Beth has got Jolene stuck in her head, playing nonstop. I just saw Beth's comment about her granddaughter. Have you have you seen it? Or is that, is that the four cool? four year old granddaughter loves the song yeah. and asks her mom. Yeah. So Jolene does want her man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! And uh, oh, look, Media Betsy Palmer is here. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Good to see you. Um, yeah, mods, be careful of this one. <laughs> Jane the Seeker is here. I was just watching Jane the Seeker and Hershey the Shadow Reader doing their meta messages. Hi, so, Jane. and ah, look, Kaylee is here. Good to see you, Fogo Pogo. Fancy is joining us. Hi, Fancy. And There you go. <laughs> so if you, have, if, if you have questions about court cards, please, please put them 
um, please put them in caps so that I can see them. And, you know, I did, I did actually create a nice little banner for that. So, um, up. Oh. Robin is here. Hi, Robin. Good to see you, Toadstool Tarot. And there you go. Just calling you a, <laughs> a, a hottie. Oh, thank you, Beth. You should have seen me like 20 minutes ago before I knew I was going live with Gerald. I said to Gerald, oh, okay, I'll come live with you. I guess I better make myself presentable then. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Arlene is much. here. Hi, Arlene. And... Uh, Marita is here. Good to see you. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Marjorie McConnell. Just trying to make sure I'm, I'm checking my list twice just to make sure everybody who's supposed to be in class is in class. So I'm like that holy teacher moment. Yeah, so. it's in the register. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, Kaylee is... Uh, Work lurking today, only half a day though. Made better by tuning in. Aww. Okay, got your question, Beth. Cheryl makes everything better. <laughs> so, Chris has had zero preparation for this. So, <laughs> uh, um, this so, so, so this this is an episode because it's been almost a year and a half or, you know, almost, well, it's been over a year and a half. I've And I've looked at a lot of, I, guess what? I've gotten more tarot decks. I've read more stuff about tarot. Um, and so I wanted to look back at each of the um, cards, uh, the four cards in the court cards, and talk about some of the basics and then some of the experience expanded um terminology for them so uh i and um i do have i do have your question beth and i also have a question from uh, from hypnicity because we're also going to be talking about what happens when you're um oh and jane said uh, jane can't read quartz right now why Maybe there the, because when I'm reading with Jane, Chris, she's actually going, Gerald, this is the queen of swords. What does this mean? She, she can't do it. Right. There's a disconnect. Okay. So I've got oh, it. Stored. There's a disconnect. We, we're, we're going, we're going to work on that. Yes, we are. So, all right. I'm going to take a sip. Anything I'm missing, Chris? Of course you don't know what we're doing, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I think you're on the ball as always, Gerald. I'm not seeing any questions or anything. Um, I was wondering, though, I've, so can I start off with a question? Yes. Um, are there any particular resources, books, websites, places that you rate in terms of um, the information that they give specifically on courts? Um, there is a really good book by, I believe it's Mary Kay Greer, that I currently do not own. It is uh, Court Cards. Okay. It's, um, I think it's Mary Kay Greer. Yeah, it's Mary Kay Greer, uh, Court Cards. And um, I have, <clears throat> and um, I have, the resources that I have, it's like 23, uh, 21 ways to read Caro, Tarot, mm -hmm. Mary Kay Greer. Okay. Um, I think I've got that book. Yes, you probably have a, a, a newer version. Uh, this is uh, Tina Gong. This is Tarot, and this was... I talked about this one during a... Um, um, Heather from Soul Alchemy with Indigo Jaguar, and I did a deck casual about this, and this has good information in it. Um, WTF is Tarot. Nice. And I also, I'm a person who, Chris, I, I like the guidebooks with stuff. Right. So, and where is the um, Book of Maps from um, nice. Spirit Keeper's Tarot Revelation? I, I would say, well, what, what do you think? Do you have some that are work, work good for you? Ah. Uh, um, See, to be honest, I'm just like thinking about it as I ask the question. 
And I think that when it comes to any other cards in the deck, so your ace to ten pips, your majors, basically anything else, I'm very much like I'll read it. Like, I'll read it as according to my understanding of that card and what I know that card says to me, but I tend to, like, well, I take the pictures into account, do you know what I mean? I take the, yes. the, the yes. artist's expression of that card into account. But I'm just thinking, I think the courts, more than anything else, I tend to read the courts just, like, how I understand the courts. Unless there's something really kind of a interesting and different going on I tend to kind of, uh, right, okay, well my page of swords is my, my student of the mind, so he's learning things, he's curious he's maybe a wee bit of a nosy bastard um, like that I tend to kind of uh, use my formulas for the courts more than anything else mm -hmm. so I don't know if I've actually went to a book and read about the courts in quite some time um, yeah. so that, that was what actually sparked the question, it was because I'm, I'm interested to know it's a great question, and um, there are um, um, so uh, Jamie Jamie popped in that the book that I was referring to was calling "Understanding the Tarot Court" by Mary Kay Greer, and uh, and Beth shared Ethany wrote a book on the court cards and has very helpful exercises and. I think Jamie's mentioned that your tarot court read any deck with confidence by Ethany. I think that yeah. might be the same book yeah. that we're talking about. And Zend Out Guide to Understanding Tarot, Kaylee has mentioned. Uh, Sharon Robinson, hello. Colorful Foresight, hello. Today we're not doing readings, um, but uh, we are talking about the court cards. So, oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you. And read any deck. Thanks, Kristen. So, but, okay, so I am, I am particular because I also, I, I, I also try to, okay, well, I would be remiss if I did not mention For the Love of Divination by Kelly uh, Fitzgerald. So you might, uh, this is something you can get information about downloading it from her, her, from her um, website. And by the way. Purchase responsibly. Know your limits. We're here to share, not to sell. Got it. <clears throat> so, Pia's Eclectic Life is here. Hello. Oh, Thank and you. Um, Lorraine Orr. Hello, Chris. I would love to have you read any book to me anytime. Absolutely love your voice. <laughs> Thank you, Lorraine. <laughs> so, and um, here's here's another one. Tarot court cards for beginners bring clarity to your readings. And um, oh, yeah. uh, Pia's Eclectic Life is here. Hello, Pia. Um, the other thing is, is in, and I've talked about this the, the whole time that I've done Tarot the Stashway, and, and I hope people are, are, are taking, taking me up on it. Get a notebook, take some pictures, whatever, but write down your stuff, what the cards mean to you. Um, and one, one, one card or one section for each, for each of the, um, for each of the cards, because it really helps. It's a great referral. Okay. And Thomas of, um, Hermit's Mirror, um, put out Awaken Your Court Cards, a workbook to bring your court cards to life. I love it. I mean, this is good. And, um, yeah, lots, lots and lots of good resources mentioned there. Yes. Um, so that is really good. Yes. It's a great question. And Thomas from Terror Your Way is here. So, um, but I do hope, I do hope, um, sub, well, I'm a person who I learn by writing stuff down. And when I'm okay. reading in a book, I am highlighting it. I'm actually underlining it. The um, 78 Degrees of Wisdom. And what's the other Rachel Pollock book? Um, Tarot Wisdom. Tarot wisdom, yeah. So, um, Calla Lizzie has joined us. Hi, Calla Lizzie. Good to see you. So, Chris, let's start with here. Let me put this banner up. Let's start with pages. Okay. Brilliant. Pages. 
Um, when you think of pages, what are the first couple of things that pop into your mind? Uh, student, new start, enthusiasm, immaturity, but kind of a not necessarily in a bad way, just yes. a lack of development and mm -hmm. their kind of a suit. Um, yeah, the kind of a, like the new start and the team or like the, you know, the, the student of life, like that kind of a thing. Yeah. I, new yeah. I love, I love the idea of beginner, um, beginning because, um, all of the courts are important, but it, so I like beginner um, because it does not mean lesser because if depending upon your reading, all pages in a reading could be extremely valuable. So um, I like that you said enthusiastic. I, I yeah. like that. I think that's good. And um, yeah, um, Beth, has, uh, uh, Beth has said uh, apprentice, messenger, yes. Kristen said learner, curious, and new. I like that. I like that word curious. I'm writing that down. Um, and Robin shared pages, the kid in the family. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the freshman new to campus. Yes. Yep. Um, oh, by the way, spiritual Sean is here. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Um, and uh, Jackie Jacaranda is here. Hey, Jackie. Good to see you. Um, so I, I again I I have novice written down and I think this is when we think about this um I, if we relate this to a person a human person or not a human person I mean good lord <laughs> a human person Gerald that's helpful um this is someone who's young this is a a youth this is um high energy um I have written down the idea of the page is someone who in, is it's initiating something. Mm -hmm. There's an initiation yep. about that. Sometimes you could see the, uh, the page called Prince or princess. Yep. Um, this is somebody who studies a lot. This is that wanting to get more information. Um, yep. And, Okay, novice, a person who is new or inexperienced in a field or situation. So think about that in relation to the suit. The um, In the Terror of Oneness, Robin refers to this as inspiration of that suit. Right, okay. I love that. I love that. And, and that initiation. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Spiritual Sean, the sponge. <laughs> I, li I like I like him. So inexperienced, but I, I feel like I want to add that they have uh, a natural proclivity for their for the mm -hmm. suit. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like the page of swords isn't someone who's, you know, who's completely empty in their, their mind, you know what I mean? The Page of Swords has a natural kind of acuity for using their mind. The Page of Wands is someone who's naturally got ideas and they're, they're oh, that's good. adventurous, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. as, you know, as much as I see the pages as people that are inexperienced and, you know, potentially quite immature and that they don't have that experience of, of putting their, their, you know, the, I want to say weapon there, but that's not the right word. They're, they're you know, just their suit. Like, I suppose if it's a sword it as a weapon. But um, as much as they maybe don't have that experience of putting it into play, they they have a natural kind of a... Um, There's an know, affinity for that suit. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm, yeah. I'm struggling with words today. Sorry, folks. <laughs> that's, that's okay. We have um, we have some great questions uh, that I want to I want to poke um, poke at because Beth said, "What uh, what element would you assign the page? What would you um, say?" I think I would 
generally, I would think I would I would assign Earth to the page, but not if I'm totally honest with you and with myself, probably not for any specific reason except by process of elimination, um, because I really see the Kings as aligned to. I see the Kings aligned to air, like that works for me. The Queens aligned to water works with me. The Knights, with all their kind of a action aligned to fire, works for me. And it's almost like it's by process of elimination, then the, the pages just align to earth. And mm -hmm. I don't really know if that actually makes sense. And lately I've been questioning how helpful actually is it to assign elements to the, the court cards. Uh -huh. um, it, it's helpful sometimes, like King of Swords in particular is like the air of air. And I find that really, that, that opens that card up That's to powerful. me because I'm, yeah, but I'm, yeah, so Earth, but I'm not really sure if I'm stuck on that. No, I, th I, th I think this makes this makes sense, and um, I'm I am I'm part of me is because the chat is is really really going. I think the pages because they are they're 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 the initiators, um, and so I part of me part of me wants to see them. As I mean, par part of me wants to see them as Earth because it's brand new. The seeds are being planted, and we're and we're getting there. Um, but I could also see them as very youthful for the swords because it's like they're soaking all of the knowledge in. They're trying to take it all in. Um, mm -hmm. But I like the idea of maturity when it comes to to that. So. That's a that's a bit of a tough question, actually. And Beth said, you know, the page of wands can be fearless. The page of swords can be a bit rash. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Proclivity. So that's yeah. a good word. Love that. Beth said, I always think of Professor Professor McGonagall when someone says that word proclivity because she says to is it Seamus Finnegan? She says, uh, um, you've got a particular proclivity for pyrotechnics, meaning you always blow shit up. Yes. Um. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and Beth says, I assign pages um, to air. So page of pentacles would be air, earth. Yes. And this is one of those things. Um, hi, Psychic uh, Dionic. Good to see you. Jana. Yeah, um, one. And um, Robin says, I see pages as air because of their being the delivery system of the information. Yes. Um, and Jane said, I hear pages turn into queens and knights turn into kings. Yeah, I could see that. Donna, artist and oracles is here. Good to see you. If I've missed anyone, my apologies. Um so, okay, I'm taking off some of the stuff. I just heard uh, dog ears going <laughs> like that. You, th you sure that? You sure that? <laughs> I think that was solar. Um, they always do that, and I'll, I'll, I'm always like, "Oh, is that not a solar?" Because they do it with uh, it's that ears that flap about and uh -huh. cast things. Um, yeah. Hello, Earth Star. Well, and one of the things that um, uh, Sylvia said, Paige is like the energy of curiosity to me. Yeah, I, I think that's um, that's a great, great uh, way to describe it. Um, so the um, I was I was looking at this book, and one of the things that's helpful in this book is is they give uh -huh. they give the um, the focus. So the pages. The focus is internal, and the event is messenger or messages, and action is learn. So I I, I like that that we think about that as learn. Um, yeah. Okay. So inspiration is one of those things. In in the Spirit Keepers Tarot, Benabel refers to the pages as the heralds. So there's there's that announcement aspect of it. So, but um, okay. Um, so spirit spirit keepers is interesting. I I feel like I don't know about you. I feel like that does its own thing. 
when it comes to the courts and it's almost hard to equate it to your traditional courts. It's kind of like the vision cards and the shining tribe. Um, I think I kind of I get myself locked up a bit trying to equate courts and decks like that to the, the traditional system and it's almost I better just learn that system itself but it'd be interesting to know whether anyone finds has a different experience you know whether you do kind of a, um, equate them Donna shared I see pages uh, as off uh, I see pages as often like the rookies they're learning with exuberance and yeah. I, I like that that word exuberance, because when, for me, when a page shows up, it's just like going, go in this with a childlike curiosity, suspend yeah. your disbelief, forget everything you've learned in, in the past and come at it with a, with a, with a new approach. Um, spiritual Sean said news bearers, essentially. Yeah. 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 So, all right, let's move on to the knights when yeah. you think about knights what are you thinking of i'm thinking of the worker bees of the suit i'm thinking of the ones that are carrying out all of the you know all of the the actions of that suit whatever that might be mm -hmm. um they probably embody the energy of the suit most visibly to their kingdom to use the analogy of page night queen king um but you know your your knights to me are the people who if you're like a third person looking on you're really going to recognize that suit and that person because of how they kind of embody it and how they carry it out and their uh -huh. every action you know mm -hmm. um that to me is the knight so they're all about action they're all about kind of uh, doing stuff um you know movement a uh, lot, lot and that's why i associate i think it's helpful to associate them with fire because there's just so yeah. much energy and the knights even the knight of pentacles you know he's of all the pentacles courts he's probably the most um you know the most action centered yes the the knights are always doing something there's always a do about the knights um yeah. i have you know this is definitely the card of action and one of the things that uh, that I have written down in my notes is, is the idea of a slow burn. Sometimes the knights, oh no, sorry, that's for the Knight of Pentacles. Apologies. Um, yeah, by the, the way, is this helpful, Gerald? Because I've got. Oh, cool. Written, that's great, Chris. Uh, yeah, true. I know this is the Smith way, not everybody particularly reads with no, this that's type. Okay. That's good. Um, Thank you. It's okay. And um, so also the knights are the ones who that are on a quest. They're, they want to do something. And in the Terror of Oneness, she refers to them as the action of the suit. Yep. And I, I really like that. I think that's great. Um, I also, this is the idea of uh, the, the age group for a knight would be um, young adult um, if you're looking at it from the sense of maturing. So the, the knights are full into puberty and uh, they're going and trying to establish themselves. So, yeah. Um, the Benabel wind refers to them as the shining one, which is, I think knights are oftentimes shining. You're right. So <laughs> I think, I think that's good. Question. Yeah. And um, in, um, okay, so we have the adolescents. Their focus is external. Their events are movement and their action is definitely to act. Um, so we have had incredible yeah. comments. So um, let's, uh, let's get on with their. Oh, thanks, Jane. Yes, thank you, Jane. Um, I think it's um, just to think about this interest and like, the knights are, when you compare them to the page, they have a certain staying power. I think sometimes the problem with the page is that, you know, the all of the kind of keywords that we talked about for the page seem to come from that being the new start or that novelty. Yes. Do you know what I mean? But uh -huh. the, the issue with the page is that novelty can wear off, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and quite often you find the pages, they, whilst they're really good at kind of initiating, you know, to bring uh -huh. that word back, they 
often lack the staying power to carry their thoughts or their, you know, their plans or their actions through to, mm -hmm. you know, to actually carry them out. The the knights really bring that action and that staying power into it. Um, mm -hmm. But then to compare them to maybe someone like the king, to me, the knights maybe, whilst they, they're action-based and they're all about getting the stuff done, sometimes they can lack that view of the bigger picture. So yes. your knight of you, you know, your knights are the ones that are going to be kind of a. I need to find a new expression for this because this is a horrible expression. But you know that expression, flogging a dead horse. Yes. You know you're kind of a working away at something, and in actual fact, you you've just not realised that it's, it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. your knights kind of a that that would be your knights that you would find doing that, and that's where they lack the influence of the king who can see the bigger picture. For me, yeah. anyway. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, pages are not battle ready. Knights are. And um, we've got this staying power that comes from having more maturity and life experience. Bye, Betsy. Um, and Robin said, um, knights are more doing than thinking. They embrace enthusiasm but lack maturity. Such teen, uh, teen energy, yes. Um, and I also like what Robin said is, is the knights are the action of the hierarchy. They carry out the orders of the king and queens. So, and, uh, what? <laughs> she just came up to me and handed me a wee note. <laughs> says, oh. I'm going to Asda for snacks, but it took me about five minutes to decipher his handwriting. I was like, I'm going to Asian what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Asda for snacks. So Sandy's going to Asda for snacks if anyone wants anything. Ooh, I would like a curly whirly, please. Jenna wants a curly whirly. He said, okay. <laughs> um, you know, the staying power that comes from having more maturity and life experiences. Um, okay. There was something other, something else. The nights are the action. Okay, got that, got that. Knights are the next step, the psychological or spiritual growth, going from inspiration or enthusiasm and putting into action with influences from each suit. Yes. Um, Robin said the knights are police force and military. They definitely can be. Um, yes, aged aged into their 20s. So one of the things that I have written down, Chris, that is it is fun is... is um, the knights let it rip with the energy. They're the ones that are going to say, look what I can do. Look what I can do. And I'm looking at the knights that you have there. And that is exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Look what I, I can do. It. So, yeah. Um, I think it, uh, there are certain elements where it can be troublesome. So for me, like, we actually kind of see it depicted. See, if you think about this horse, this horse is... The, uh, sorry, I'm pointing to the Knight of Wands. The horse is up on two legs. So it's... And now Luna's up on two legs. Thank you for demonstrating that, Luna. <laughs> Let me see if I can switch to... There we go. Aww. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> it's because her dad's away to Asda. Now I've got to give her attention. So the horse is up on two legs, which takes a lot of energy. It's expending a lot of energy, but it's not actually going anywhere on two legs. So there's lots of energy being used up in the Knight of Wands, but it's not actually leading anywhere. It's almost like a dog chasing its tail. It's like going around in circles. Uh -huh. um, just sometimes, there's, for me, there's particular elements, and we can kind of see it in the, the, the swords as well. You know, it's like he's going so fast. Can he actually see where he's going? You know, can he actually be precise? It's funny, I was having a conversation with my friend um, like last week, maybe, and he was telling me how in certain countries they don't look so in the UK. We have a national speed limit of 70 miles per hour. Uh -huh. I don't know if what that is in kilometres per hour. But in certain countries, they just don't. There's certain roads where there's just like, I don't know, national speed limit. I th yeah, there's no national speed limit, but if you're going above a certain speed, your insurance won't cover you, right? And I was like, that's just like how, like if I was going at, let's say, 150 miles per hour, there's no way my brain could process what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, 
in a way where yeah. I could act if something was happening. Do you know what I mean? So if I was some like all of a sudden approaching a slower moving car, my brain wouldn't know it because I, I I'm yeah. I would be too slow at processing the information. And I really get this. Sorry, I'm I'm realizing I'm pointing to cards and you can't see them. I really get that impression with the Knight of Swords. He's he's moving so quickly that you know I, it would I would question whether he can actually process everything that's happening and. You know, as much as it's good to act fast, if you're acting too fast without thinking, uh, it can it can lead into trouble. So sorry, that was that was yes. just a wee tangent. That I no, that's that's there. that's great. Um, that that's that makes a lot of sense. Free spirit, Sherry voices from the swamp are are here, and um, uh, BJ's esoteric musings is here. So, and and just to catch everybody up, we're talking about. Uh, we're doing Tarot the Stashway. We're talking about, uh, we're revisiting the court cards. We're talking about knights right now. And Chris, this is a very active, uh, beautiful chat because some of the comments that people have made include um, things like, uh, wait a minute, okay. Um, knights can have a cockiness about them. They don't know what they don't know. That's from Kristen Louise. And um, Fancy said the bravery. So there is a bravery. Oh, and Donna said um, knights as a verb. Um, oh, that was from Jane. Jane said knights as a verb. So, yeah. Oh, and um, and uh, Beth tonight. is saying, go ahead. I was just tonight someone. That, that's, oh, I said knights as a verb. Like yes. you're knighting someone. So you're almost like recognizing that they've, done they've achieved something in that area you know when you think about today like people getting obes and kbs like uh-huh um yeah yeah um and um, beth had sh you know when i said you know the knights are going to be saying hey look what i can do it's like well to be fair the knight of pence is saying it very quietly and in fact the knight of pentacles probably isn't saying it because he's too busy showing it off it's like there you go look what i can do um, the knights in the chess have more flexibility than other pieces. They have different uh, flexibility. They can jump and move, but they have to. They're stuck in that. They they don't have any flexibility. Uh, yeah, but they can do moves that no one else can. I, I love looking yes. at uh, the tarot courts as analogies for chess, and I've got a particular one that I love for the kings and queens. But mm -hmm. um, the knights as well, like your your knights, they can move in ways that other no other piece can um and i suppose in the tarot i would equate that to them being so kind of action driven they're the ones on the ground getting the work done do you know what i mean so yes. they can do things that that no other no other court can really mm -hmm. yeah um beth asked what element for knights i assign fire i would also assign fire to that yeah same i know there's um i think the golden dawn the knights are air and the kings are fire, but for me, the knights are fire every day of the week. Mm -hmm. Robin said, Chris, look at your four cards and see how they reflect the movement of their particular elements. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there you go. Plucky is like saying, pentacles equals standing still, cups equals walking slowly, wands picking up speed, and swords um, racing at top speed. Oh, Jana said. Oh, Jana said, sword knight has zero feet on the ground. The uh, cup knight looks like his horse is dancing in place. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, see, and here here's the important thing with that is is, and Chris, both you and I, we we do look at the pictures because the pictures and what they're doing influence how to read it in the reading. So that's. Yeah. Knowing that is really important. Do we know why they're not heading in the same direction? Um, I think it's artist choice. Definitely, yeah. To, to be honest with you. But some people do read that if you face left, you're, you're looking at the past. If you face right, you're looking toward the future. So. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. This is this is great. Um, movement, movement, movement. 
Knights in their bravado. I like that. That's fun. Okay. Um, okay. I think I'm done with the Knights. Do you have anything else to no. add about Knights? I don't think so, no. No. The Knights, the Knights oftentimes don't think about things. They don't think it through. They just, they start. So, um, okay. Yeah. So let's move to Queens. So, all right. Getting caught up in chat. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Um, Ghana said, never thought of swords air being faster than wands. Pondering as I'm a double air sign. Uh-oh. Uh, so, thinking about queens. Um, yep. Queens. Okay, and I will say this. Kings and queens in my world are equally powerful. They demonstrate the understanding of that suit differently. So, they're equally mature. And, uh, so, they, they have the same power. So... Uh, what would you like to say about queens? So I actually have a slightly different view to what you do. Okay. And I noticed that earlier on, I think it might have been Jane that said that the pages kind of a develop into queens and the knights kind of a develop into kings. Uh -huh. So for me, the queen is the most powerful court of all four. The queen is, so to me, your page, knight, king, is like your development from, you know, student, uh, you know, uh, workhorse, doer, worker bee, whatever you want to call it, into master. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are a very kind of a, you know, to put it in a certain way, uh, like the human kind of a, uh, elements, the human development. Um, the queen, however, for me, is like, the goddess, the queen, is the the glue that holds everything together. She creates yes. the environment that allows each of them to develop into the next. For me, it's kind of a, like what the fool is to the majors. You know, the fool is that that energy that lets you leap from magician to high priestess, from hermit to wheel of fortune. You know, the fool is the kind of a joining energy for each of them. Uh -huh. For me, the queen does that with the courts. The queens are coaches, they're teachers, they create, they are environments, they the environment mm -hmm. itself, they create yes. an environment that lets us be better. Yes. I thought I said that when Robin mentioned the knights and chess, so to me, what I'm saying is reflected perfectly in chess because if you think about the king, the king can move one space mm -hmm. in all directions. Yes. The queen can move in those directions, but she can move as many spaces as she wants. So it's like the power of the king is amplified to limitless potential. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so to me, I'd, 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 and I've kind of, I feel more and more strongly about this is uh, more lately. Um, the, the queens are, without the queens, there's no, there's no progression into the next stage. You know, it's the queens that enable us to do that. So mm -hmm. for me, that that's that's really important in how I read the um, my understanding of that. Yes. And if I was to create my own tarot deck uh, that wasn't strictly trying to follow a system, so if I was doing like a TDM or something, then obviously I would do it properly. But if I was to create my own tarot deck, I think I would probably have the queens as the final core, either the final or the first. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. to to me, they're just they're they're, they're beyond. They're, they've transcended. They're beyond the the, uh, the the pages, the knights, and the kings. So sorry, I feel as though I've I've um I've got off my soapbox now. No, um, no, this so, is good. Yeah, yeah. Teachers, um, coaches, environments. So, like for example, the queen of um swords might be, as uh, you know, they might be a teacher. They might be someone who's going to disseminate information and teach you. Um, but they could also be the actual environment that's so like a library. They might be an environment where you can gain information and yes. learn and expand your mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of read them in that way. Yeah. Um, so sorry, Gerald, on you go. No, no, this is this is great. And um, D Alloway 
uh, girl, uh, 1967 is here. Uh, we've had a few other people pop in who, uh, Pamela Bachelor, um, Pamela Bachelor said, yes, Chris, I read the queen is the creator of the realm and the king is the one who maintains the realm. Uh, yep. and, um, Jackie agrees with you, Chris. I mean, we can all go home now that Jackie agrees with you, right? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. and, um. Calla Lizzie said, to me, the queen and kings are two sides of a brain. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, and uh, Donna said, loving the whole discussion, can see both ways. Gerald's view of king and queen as equals, and my feminist loves Chris's take on the queens. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and... Okay. Um... Jane the Seeker said, the king might be the head, but the queen is the neck. She tells the king where to go. <laughs> I like that. I think the queen, like, so that's, and this is why I kind of assign that watery element to the queens, because they connect, and that's the key to their power. The king, to me, is, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're masters of their element. I'm not putting down the kings, you know, the kings I have, I have ultimate respect for them. Um, they see the bigger picture. They maintain their kingdom. Um, they know their element inside and out, and they could sit and tell you about it. You know, for they could talk to you for hours about their particular element and teach mm -hmm. you all there is to know about it. Yes. Or sorry, tell you all there is to know about it. The difference with the king and the queen is the king can throw information at you. The queen can connect with you as a person. Yes. Okay, this is where that watery element comes in. The queen can connect. So the king is educating minds. The queen is educating hearts. You know, the queen is creating other, you know, the, the, the queen is creating other experts, essentially, is what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Um, yes. And that's why she has such a powerful influence. That's why she, I, I find the chess analogy really good. Because she does have such a far reach, because she is kind of a influence in hearts in that way. Uh huh. Yes, yes. I um, mean, and, and part of what I'm also, I, um, I also see when it comes to the queen is the one who works from the inside out. The king is the one who works from the ins, uh, from the outside in. Right. So the queen, as as you're saying, she's going to nurture you, um, the, and the queen shows you where the king will tell you exactly what to do. Uh, there's a lot of lunar energy in the queen. The there's some other names that I've heard for the queen in the court cards. I've heard guardian of that suit. I've also heard spirit of the suit, uh, okay. which I think are extremely uh, powerful. Uh, she is, um, in, in Benabel's book for, um, the, yeah, the name of this, uh, the book of maps, she refers to the Queens as shields. Okay. So I think that's interesting. By Kristen Louise. Um, by Kristen. Yeah. Um, it's in the ink, which where I first heard it referred to as guardian. Uh, the queen is the adept who says you can also do this. Hmm. Yep. And um, I mean, so the queen is the one who creates. Definitely the one who, who creates. Yeah. All right. King is uh, educating minds. Queen is educating. Oh, that's a nice little, I like that. Um, okay. Let me get caught up on this amazing chat. Um. Oh, and Marjorie said, uh, Jane the Seeker, that's from my big fat Greek wedding. And it is. The the queen may be the head, but the queen is the neck. So. <laughs> um, oh, and Donna shared, so could Paige and Knight be two sides of an adolescent's brain? Probably. I mean, I think <laughs> we're, in most walks of life, we're probably always learning. And we're yes. most of us will learn as we do. I know I'm definitely a practical learner. Uh -huh. So 
and uh, I would like to think that you know the the high hegians, the you know the kings, the masters out there are probably still always learning, depending on their field, of course. But um, so there's probably a wee bit of um, you know there's probably a wee bit of all of the courts and all of us, you know. Yeah, well, I I think there is, and um, excuse me, I stand corrected. Uh, Jane the Seeker said <clears throat> the spacious tarot. <laughs> so my apologies this is uh jane's favorite uh personal deck so ripping off what someone uh else said about king and queen as two sides yeah i think i actually like that that because there is an evolution for me oh wait a minute let me get caught up and and um robin said queens are local government mayors governors uh, senators congress they're not the head of government, but the country wouldn't um, operate without them. I could see that, yes. Uh, depending upon the other cards in the spread, the Knight of Cups with the horse's head bowed and one leg raised, Knight offering a cup makes me think of offering reverence and not a respect. That's a good, um, that's a good description, uh, BJ. So... Um, okay. Queen is the creator of the realm. Yep. And Robin said, I see all four courts as a family, but also an evolutionary sequence in the hierarchy. I, I am that way too. For me, when I'm looking at, when I'm laying out cards, I want to see that all three, all four of these cards could be related because of, of the reaction to the suit. So, okay, I'm going to pause there, Chris, and ask you what you're thinking. Yes, I'm just taking them. I'm taking them. What everyone's saying, um, just that as I, I love geeking out about the tarot, but I love geeking out about the courts because I feel as though there's always more to learn, yeah. and even just like sitting, like writing about it, thinking about it, just yourself, I feel as though there's, there's always more that you can. And I love like um. Uh, BJ's esoteric musings is kind of a riffing off the pictures when they were talking about the the Knight of Cups there, you know, and that's a whole mm -hmm. other level that we could that yes. we're not even getting into that we could look mm -hmm. at, you know, um, mm -hmm. like what what is that Queen of Swords doing, you know? Why does she look so stern? What what is she kind of doing with that hat? You know, like it's just it's it's interesting, and this is where they it's interesting to look at the courts within readings you know to yes. see right what picture is it that's on her her mm -hmm. other side and who, who is she looking so sternly at is she fed up with this queen of cups being obsessed with her stupid big cup like what even is that cup all about she's thinking um she's pointing to it with her hand and she's ready to just yep. do you know yeah. what i mean like it's absolutely it's Absolutely. That is so important because of the interactions of the cards. That's where the beauty of the readings come in, I think. Um, Plucky shared, I'm only learning tarot. Queen is the mother maternal nurturing energy. Yes, that is oftentimes how it's seen. And with all cards, there are uh, there are positive aspects and there are negative aspects. So when we see the queen of cups thinking about the queen of cups um where she's she is a she is a child uh, she she would nurture but uh if 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 uh if she's not a, in a balance what would that queen of cups be she could be emotionally manipulative so do do pay attention to that so yeah definitely yeah. yep queen of cups would be the to, to, to follow that <laughs> here's me saying i try not think too much about the courts has been assigned to elements and i've i think i've done it like five times but uh, if the queens of water then the queen of cups is the water of water yes so that's very very kind of emotionally deep um yes but it can it can present a problem you know like if you're that immersed into your emotions like that you could find yourself in a really dark place if you don't have a, a real good handle on that Mm -hmm. um so definitely definitely like um you just have the negative aspects and and jane the seeker said i love direction and tarot don't give me a deck where everyone is facing forward yeah <laughs> they're sort of hard to use sort of hard to use 
Um, okay. So thinking about, okay, so the Queens, is there anything else I want to share about the, definitely aspects of the mother, definitely aspects of the high priestess, as well as the empress come in for, for the, for the Queens. So, um, yeah. and, um, um, Beth says, I read Kings and, uh, Kings and Queens as interchanging earth and water energy. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about, um, Kings. Okay. What do you think about the Kings? I'm so they've mastered their suit. Um, kind of, I talked about them earlier when I was yeah. bouncing them off the Queens, but, um, yeah, they are, so the, the kind of a social response, but they've got the social responsibility. So the Kings are the ones that see the bigger picture for me. Mm -hmm. Um, they, you know, there are certain Kings, particularly like your ones, um, you know, who will still want to get their hands dirty. They'll still want to kind of uh, take on a wee bit of that night persona and get in on some of the action. Um, but they maintain their kingdom. They keep an eye, like I say, on the bigger picture and make sure that everything's kind of, uh, everything's ticking along. Mm -hmm. um, they have mastered their element. Um, so they're the kind of, uh, if you've got a problem, then chances are your king as the intellectual who's going to that kind of an intellectual side of it where they are going to be able to kind of a um find a solution just because of the sheer amount of experience that mm -hmm. they have got um but yeah that's probably what i would say generally about the kings what about you well lexi is here and just in time because kings are their favorite so there you go. Nice. Uh, I think for me, the uh, the 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 kings are the they work from the uh, outside in, whereas the queen works from inside out, and the queen or the king tells you, whereas the queen shows you. Yeah. And um, the um, I think there is there there's an authority about the kings. As it relates to the four of uh, the four suit cards, or the four court cards, Terror of Oneness refers to them as the embodiment. Um, they also mm -hmm. offer a structure to what's going on, and the king inhabits in the um, the Book of Maps for the Spirit Keepers. Benabel refers to the kings as the archangels. Right. Um, and um, there's also the sovereign of 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 the suit. Uh, equal powers. Yeah. Okay. These um, since we, they are the uh, the emperor in the in the court cards, they have that aspect. There's a lot of mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of maturity about them. They they can yep. be the sage. They have a lot of that wisdom about them. I've also seen them referred to as like the shaman of it. Shaman sort of feels a bit more queen oriented to me because of that. So, um, all right. King of Wands has base uh, future projects on reflection of what he's been through creativity in the past. Yes. Uh, Kings are mental intelligence. Queens are emotional intelligence. I like that. I like that a lot too. And Beth said the pages are the fool energy. Knights have magician energy. Queens have high priestess and empress energy. Knights have emperor and hierophant energy. That's good. I like that. Um. See, while she's reading the comments, Cheryl, I'm going to go quickly turn the light on in here because it's just got very dark very sure, quick. Sure, sure. Um, Donna said, uh, Shaman is Hierophant and Wildwood, I think, yes. Maybe, yeah. Um, and Jane, yes, I, I understand that. Uh, um, pages were angels because the messengers. When I first, I, I mean, Thomas Balustrade uh, has a YouTube channel, was talking about if you're, if you're wanting to deliver a message, 
would you want it to be the youngest in the in the suit? Um, because he was looking at knights as messengers. I'm like, that's a really interesting concept. So if you've got an important messenger, would you want an important message? Would you want to give it to the youngest? Maybe if they're only carrying a piece of paper. So I think, um, and I could be wrong here. Please do correct me if I'm wrong, folks. But when I think of that, I think of like, um, you know, telegrams being delivered in war times. And I think uh, they tended to send younger folks to do that because they, you know, they maybe weren't, they maybe weren't old enough to be fighting in the wars or whatever. Um, maybe it, there's a wee bit more of it, like, because they can, I, I'm not sure, but that that's certainly what I think of when I think of it being the, the pages delivering the message mm -hmm. messages. Well, and I also yeah. think, oh, yeah, when messages were needed to be delivered, it was delivered by the youngest because everyone else had jobs to do. Oh. Uh, yes, and I would also think that the pages can be much more agile, and they can weave in and out, and sometimes would get uh, uh, yeah. would would be missed because they're just they're the younguns. So, yeah. um, Robin asked any thoughts on why the fourteen cards uh, in the minors the courts are placed last in the sequence? Why are they separate from the actions that came before? Come before. I mean, it comes from playing cards, doesn't it? Um, like the so. tarot was originally a system of playing cards. Um, you know, the, the playing cards that we all know and love, they came before they preceded the tarot. So I think it actually comes from that. The actual reason for it is probably more, more to do with the game of tarot or, you know, games oh, that's that are played with cards. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think... Like, I, I, don't get me wrong, I think it's probably quite an interesting question and interesting mm -hmm. to put our own divination spin on that. Yes. Um, I suppose the, the question that maybe comes before that is, right, what is the difference between the courts and the, the pips? Uh, and from that, then we ask, why do we put the pips first and then the courts? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I would answer that by saying the pips... And I'm being very loose here because I don't like to say, oh, this is this and that is that, put them into ducats and there's no overlap. But to me, the, the, the pips are maybe more describing scenarios where we see that that, that suit playing out. Um, uh -huh. Whereas the courts, more than anything else, show that energy being embodied in, within, you know, uh, being personified. Is that maybe the the best way to put it like the actions being carried out by people or how individuals can embody that energy mm -hmm. um so i suppose from there that then asks robin's question why do we put the scenarios before the people i suppose because we need to understand the pure the pureness of the energy before uh -huh. we can maybe understand how it's embodied by us um is that maybe a reason that we could assign to it could be. That's uh, uh, Robin said. Thanks, Chris. It's interesting to consider why the courts have been claimed as part of the miners. Well, and there was one suit, one deck that I was working with recently, and I'm looking at my pile of decks, think, trying to think of what it was, um, because they numbered the miners one through fourteen. They didn't call them kings, uh, queens, or knights. I thought that was very interesting. So. I've got a couple of decks that do that. I think most of the decks that I have that do that, they do have names for the courts as well mm -hmm. as numbering them. So uh, the uh, Practical Magic and a Witch Tarot does that. Okay. Um, the uh, Catherine Blackwater Tarot has them numbered as well. Okay. Um, although that does have names for them also, I know, definitely. Um, uh -huh. But... Yeah, as in, I like, there you go right away. So the 14 is the sovereign. Okay. Mm. So that's the sovereign of Earth. Beth thinks the gentle tarot does that too. Right. Okay, so here's here's a couple of questions that I have been pondering is, um, 
do the court cards actually mean a person in a reading? <laughs> I think the answer is, is it depends upon the question and where well, the position money. is. Um, because I also think I'm a firm believer it depends upon the question because maybe uh, maybe it is referring to you. If the start of a reading is a page, then whatever is going on in this reading, it would be beneficial for you to approach it with a youthful energy and a curiosity. Yeah, So definitely. Yeah, yes, it definitely does. What do you think about that, Chris? That, I, th that I agree with you. I think it depends. For me, um, it's helpful for me to think about the energy that that is trying to get across and then i can work out right is this talking about a scenario or is it talking about a person in my life is it talking about uh you know a set of shoes that i need to step into i.e is it talking about me um so like for example the page of swords is that talking about like a new learning experience that's coming up uh am i going to learn something new Mm -hmm. Is it talking about a particular student that I'm going to work with? Is it talking about, um, you know, so I suppose, like, if you're talking about it being a new learning experience, then you could say, right, okay, well, you know, that's a scenario, but also that could mean me being the learner if I'm going through a new learning yes. experience. Yes. Um, I think, but I think it's, and particularly from a beginner's point of view, I think it's more helpful to understand the energy of that court card and then you then you kind of are with experience you can work out right okay so and kind of a talk about it from the point of view of just being a, an energy whether it's a scenario or a person um and then as you you know kind of a, as you get on you develop into discerning whether it's one or the other yes do you know what i mean i do i do yeah i and and robin said i never liked the idea of courts uh, representing signet significators as described in the little white books and um and lexi reminds us says, do you remember back in the old school days when the swords swords were pale skinned dark haired uh people wands were redheads and uh, quite literally <laughs> i do remember that um, yeah. but um but you know I've, I've had readings from people who they they you do pick a court card to identify you as a significator uh and i know robin uh, he he has well and he's one of the people that i know they have different cards that represent them in the tarot it, it's not a court card so yeah yeah um, I... and um jane are you still here is this helping you at all um and by the way i have um I have hypnicity said, what is the significance of drawing a king and queen of the same suit in a reading? And this is from I think hypnicity. That depends on the question. Hypnicity. It really, really depends on the question that you've asked. It depends how they've shown up. If you've asked a question about um, you know, your love life or you know, uh, you know, that that type of question, a love type or like a soulmate type reading. Um, having both the king and the queen, you know, they are the counterpart of each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they are the other half. <laughs> yes. You know, as literally as it can get. So it may well be signified that other half in whatever place in the spread or whatever that, that it shows up in. Yeah. Um, you know, I, if you're, I don't know, maybe you're doing like a, a, a career spread and you're, you're looking at options and down one side you've got the king and the other side you've got the queen that maybe signifies that you've you're you've got an option of of going down a more managerial route or a more coaching route you know a more teaching route and that you know so mm -hmm. I, I think it really depends there's so much that um it's hard to give a one one concise answer isn't it it is and i think part of it is is it depends upon where it falls because if you look at the queens and the kings as the same of equal power it's just they are demonstrated differently the queen is going to show you the king is going to tell you that can help you interact with it 
if you if it starts off where you are uh if if you're if it starts off with king maybe you're being too forceful and you're not nurturing enough and if you do these things between them here's what could happen yeah so um so um and uh, Robin is the Three of Wands, I believe. And Robin did say, I'd rather connect with the energy of a card as a significator than the shell of a person from the outside in a court card, metaphysical or physical resemblance, rather than spiritual connection. I agree with you. You do you. So, um, And Jane the Seeker says, I am here. It has helped. But could you use it in a sentence? Which one do you want me to use in a sentence, Jane? The... You know, and Jane can't read court cards or courts right now. Why? You want me to do that? Hey, Angela. So, you know, we get what you're saying. So, um, I like the idea of uh, thinking about the aspects of it. Like the king is about, so let's say some uh we have some structure and the queen is creating the knight is action and the page is studying or initiation i like those could be a lot of fun mm -hmm. because um especially if you have a knight travel that night through your reading what do those cards yeah. mean so yeah yeah no i agree oh. Can I use any of them in a in a sentence? No, no. Um, okay. And Robin shared the king, uh, the queen, and king of the same suit and the spread feels like the nine and ten of the same suit. The ultimate achievement versus complete result. Um, we have Lexi has shared court cards are a bit tricky at first. There's no denying that, but uh, once you got it, it feels pretty natural. Yes. Yes. Oh, and here we go. The queen is still in creation mode. The king has settled the matter, so to speak. Okay. Uh, here you go. Uh, can you address how you see the difference between ace and a page? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Now, there's someone who's done a really good video on this, and now I'm trying to remember who it is. Mm. Someone's done an excellent video on just this topic, the difference between an ace and a page. I can't remember. I'll maybe need to come back and link it. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, do you, what, do you, what do you think, Gerald? Do you have particular thoughts on this? I think... Um... I, I always think of the court cards as um, doing and not just thinking per se. So it feels it's more of a, it's a manifested, it's an outcome. It's actually, it's less in your head or in your heart, but it's more already in existence. And now it's moving along. Um, I think, I do think the page the page is a very nice uh, example of uh, with the ace because the ace contains all of the potential of that suit for me. It's the page who's actually doing something about that, all of that potential. They're actually, you know, they're okay. And Jackie said, ace is new beginnings and circumstance. Pages are learners and a person. I think it's, I think it's more than just the potential. It's, something is happening with the potential mm. yeah. the uh yeah. the ace is the catalyst the raw potential the pages and princesses are the naivete in movement it's good yeah um i've just remembered who it was it was john ballatry yes um i mentioned him earlier go ahead yeah he's done a, a video on the difference between the aces and the pages and he goes into detail like things like the numerology and he goes into all sorts of detail um so that's uh 
that's definitely something to, to to check out if that's a question that you're interested in. Yeah. I suppose, like, if we look at the look at it pictorially, first of all, the in the ace you're being offered something. So there's a hand coming out of the sky and it's offering you something, you know, a a, a symbol of that suit. And the pages that something has been taken by an actual wow. individual and they're doing something with it. That's good. Um, so that's maybe that's maybe something we could riff off of for this. Like so the and the and the ace and the like Gerald just said, the ace represents the potential of the suit. Mm-hmm. But you don't necessarily you're not necessarily doing anything with that, with that potential. And that's something that I find Aces always are saying to me and readings. So if you've got the Ace of Pentacles, like this isn't you winning the lottery or something, you know, it, that, that this is a, an opportunity which can be taken up. And, you know, like it says that it has the potential of the whole suit. So you have the potential to follow that all the way through to completion. Mm-hmm. But also it could be something like that you could overlook it or you could squander the opportunity. Yes. So that that's that that's your ace that that is just like kind of a, an abstract potentiality whereas the page it, it more shows that potential energy being taken and embodied within something you know um mm-hmm. it, it's it's more it almost feels more specific and maybe more person centered um you know i like that donna said so pages as actualized potential yeah, yeah, you've seen someone doing something with that potential rather mm-hmm. than just the raw potential itself. Yeah. Beth shared, so perhaps the ace is the muse. The page then attempts to learn from the project. The knight takes off with it. The queen helps you learn from it. The king lets you know the task is completed. Yeah. That's a fun one. Like I've got um, the Inner Dimensions Tarot, and it's by Ash... Ash Rosink, I think is uh, their name, uh, non-binary creator and absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. They renamed the Aces the Source. Oh, I uh, like that. Mm-hmm. And what did they call the pages? Oh. I think Queens are Visionaries. I'm finding every court except the page. The knights are of practitioners. Um, I want to say the, the kings become masters, but I might be wrong there. Mm-hmm. Practitioners. And I love students. this. So the pages are students. So we've got students. students of earth. Okay. I like that. Let me see if I can find a source. Aye, masters, kings are masters. Sorry, Gerald, talk amongst yourself. No, no, this is great. And uh, uh, Robin said, oh, this is uh, this is good. So much information in this live on a topic that has always been confounding. I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad people are, are participating. Uh, the ace to me is a spark. You can ignore it or move through with it. Okay, there you go. So source and student. So kind of a like we actually see what we were just talking about with the source. We mm-hmm. see just the raw potential. We see the seed in the earth. Whereas in the student, we see someone is actually taking that seed and is holding it in their hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. That's great. Well, and, and you know, I was thinking about this is, is if we were to... If we were to give non-human um, names to these court cards, uh, it, it could it, it could add a huge depth to the readings. I I think so. Yeah. It's Definitely. like um, oh, and uh, Jane the Seeker said, "I don't feel so bad anymore." Thank you, Gerald, uh, Chris, and chat. And by the way, in case you are all wondering what I have going on tomorrow, Jane the Seeker is hosting a deck casual for the mystical tarot of the saints. And uh, she's hosting it. And Jamie and I 
are going to be on with her and the um, creator psychic Nath. Nice. I'm not, she's given me permission to simulcast it, so it's uh, amazing. I do love a wee chajo when you've got the creator on. Oh my gosh, yes, oh, I'm, it's I'm, so magical. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. So, um, so Jane, I kind of I had a secret aim for myself in my head that I didn't actually speak. I didn't realize, but my aim was uh, the, if you if that's how you felt about the court cards, I'd like it if by the end of this live for at least one court card for you to be really feel shit hot on. So, what like is there a particular court? that you feel you'd now understand really well and if so pop it in the chat because i'd be really interested oh, to yeah. hear your thoughts on it yes and uh jana is still listening as i drive drive very carefully and uh earth star one has said it's been a while for me this is a great refresher class thank you for all the information you're welcome hi sharon well and i think one of the things if if i would love if you're watching this if you're watching the playback Please leave comments about um, other names for these court cards. I think that could be very, very interesting. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of power in that. So instead of sticking it with the, well, this is the page or the princess or the prince. So yeah. I'd love that. Cups, I understand why. How do you feel water. about courts with different names, Gerald, generally? I like it if it makes sense to me with the other cards in the deck. If all of a sudden I have, this is the, the woo woo of cups. I'm like, on what? I, I need it to place. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kinda, I know, what about I, you? What about you? I, I think I actually mentioned this in your charge you on the tarot, the oneness, tarot of oneness. Yes. That was called. Yes. Um, when you had the creator on. So, in terms of the courts being changed, I think that we need to we we need to get out of this page night queen king, right? It's just so like ancient and doesn't really apply to everyday life anymore, if we're honest with ourselves. Yes. But but I do anytime that I it has changed up, I do need to do a translation in my head. And mm -hmm. depending on how confusing you've made it for me will determine how on board I am with those changes. Um, I think that it's particularly helpful in decks like this and sorry, that wasn't helpful in a in decks like this and um, uh, you know, Catherine Blackwater where they put 11, 12, 13, 14 in addition to their name of what it is because it's you know, it doesn't take as long, you don't need to think back. Sometimes I've found myself like, thumbing through the deck to find all the other courts to try and remember what the hell i'm looking at you know yes um so i think that that determines how how cool i am with the changes yeah. but with all that said i think we need to get we need to force ourselves we need to kind of a push ourselves out of that comfort zone and just mm -hmm. get over it and i'm not i'm, I'm going to say this i'm not even like even like kind of a, the whole daughter son mother father like we, we need to move ourselves, I think, away from the yes. strict gender binary as well. Because I think that the, what I'm going to say, right, is if anyone's not read Radical Tarot by Charlie Claire Burgess, they are the creator of the Fifth Spirit Tarot. They talk on this exact subject. They talk oh, on nice. the idea of the gender binary and the tarot and how we're essentially reducing it when we think about it just in terms of a gender binary. They talk about the courts. And they also talk about, um, you know, alternative names, exactly what you've just said, Gerald. Yes. They talk about alternative names for the courts. So that is a book that I would highly recommend um, for anyone. It's out in audiobook on Audible as well. So oh, nice. if you wanted to get it and listen to it when you're in the car, that's what I do. Um, it is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so once again, I'll get off that soapbox, which, um, which I, I brought especially for this live, apparently. <laughs> It's all good, Chris. I have I have a prop for that, you know. Um, okay, and um, I love that. So, okay, and Jane said, Jane answered the question, which was, oh, uh, it's the uh, cups. I understand water and emotion. I'm a Pisces. So, why do they call the Knight of Cups is the false knight? 
Who calls it the false knight? I've never heard of that before, Jane. So I'm um, best to answer that. The false knight? Hang on, now I have to look at something because now I'm like going, wait a minute. I mean, the, the, the Knight of Cups, an unhealthy Knight of Cups can be a bit of a schlees um, and not be truthful and only doing certain things to get what they want, using emotions as a manipulation. So, but... Again, I'm I'm going to bring the elements into, into this. Like, something I yeah, say that I don't often do, and I've I've done it like more often in this live than ever before. But so knights are assigned to fire and cups are water. So fire and water together, that's a tricky combination. Um yes. when it's in balance, it's great. But when it's not, you know, when that when that gets out balanced, that that's when you start looking at issues of um you know, like really em deep emotional issues that can have a an impact on on you um so for me when the knight of cups is out of balance that's if that if that's if that's talking to me then that's telling me i you know you kind of i need to like watch yourself and uh the, the, uh, your your own health is coming into it here that yeah just um just my thoughts on that that's actually i i like the way of looking at that and you know extinguishes very quickly um yeah fire and water can be very steamy but when it gets out of balance and uh, jane says okay i understand um but in that circumstance wouldn't that be the knight of cups reversed as you were just describing out of uh getting sleazy yes. out of balance yeah oh sleazy well yeah, not everyone reads reversals. That's mm -hmm. I suppose, and like I, I suppose every court has both positive and negative aspects. So, Absolutely. um, for some people, if you're not a person that reads reversals, like I'm not, um, so if the Knight of Cups came up, perhaps in a spread position, or if I just intuitively felt like it was t giving me a lesson, then I might kind of a take on, uh, I might I might think about some of the more negative aspects of that. But um, I suppose if you are a reversal reader, then um, you might assign those positive characteristics to the upright and the negative to the yeah. reverse. And Jane is saying political terror readers say that a lot. And apparently that's also what, um, okay, she, uh, the Shining Tribe Terror, some of the stuff that you were talking about is what it was used in that apparent, apparently. And um, by the way, Astrological Tarot, Michelle Marie is here. Hello. Hi, Michelle Marie. The reversed Knight of Cups can um, be hedonistic. Don Juan floating through life. And uh, I don't read reversals. I can tell how a card reads by the cards around them. Yes. Uh, and, um, you know, who has really good information about reversals? Cause I did, I did a show with Thomas from terror your way about reading reversals. Benabel Wynn has a really good section in her holistic tarot talking about reversals and it's not just right. the opposite of it. It means that it's going to take a little bit longer than what it might normally, or it's not quite done. So, yeah. And, um, by the way, um, Deb, Purple Elephant Deb H is here. Per Wikipedia, reverse. The card represents unreliability and recklessness. It indicates fraud, false promise, and trickery. It represents a person who has uh, trouble uh, discerning when and where the truth uh, and lies begin. I can see that. I think as well it will depend on the deck you're looking at, won't it? So the, the particular, like, so like, the Lightseer Tarot, the Knight of Cups shows a, a very handsome gentleman, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so they exude this kind of a, like this, um, like lover boy, fuck boy romance. Sorry, I'm all, uh, hopefully I'm allowed to swear because I've just done it. Um, this kind of a romantic okay. um, uh, side of the Knight of Cups. 
So if that's reversed, then you might see that as those kind of um those aspects reflected in the negative. So you might see it as someone who's, you know, who is not very faithful, who um is not very careful about, you know, mm -hmm. what they're doing. Um Yeah. All of that kind of thing. So I think it there is a certain aspect where it will depend on how the art how the artist has depicted the and, individual. And and again, it really does depend upon where it falls in the the spread. So, um, okay, yes, Knight of Cups yeah. can be the uh, tender, sweet lover, or the negatively, the you know, yes. Sorry, Gerald. No, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's where a lot of sailors are doing. I, it's not always a, it's not appropriate to do that on other people's channels without permission. It so is okay to say "fuck boy" when you're referring to the you know the the knight of the knight of cups, yeah, but the the knight of wands might be the one who you know you know anyhow. Uh, BJ's esoteric musings said, "If we modernize the court, the knights are UPS, FedEx, UPS, and slow freight <laughs> shipping container via barges." <laughs> What are you doing with your UPS, your USPS, FedEx drivers, aesthetic musings is what I want to know. I don't know, but I thought it just, <laughs> it, 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 and it's a good giggle. So any last minute thoughts on the courts? I've, I have, uh, I have, uh, I've gotten you involved for, you know, uh, for a good solid uh, hour and a half uh, at the last minute. So, um, but uh I think we've covered a lot. I, the only thing that I would say, and I, I, this kind of applies to um, to tarot in general, is ultimately you need to find your own feet with it. You need to find your own, what it means to you. Yes. Um, it's, so it, it's great, like reading up on it, listening to conversations, getting involved in conversations. But ultimately, you need to find what these what what these car what these individuals mean to you yes um and one way that could be really good to do that actually is to think about the people in your life and or look at the look at a court card and think right who in my life really embodies the page of cups mm -hmm. who do i know that is the embodiment of the page of cups or the knight of wands or whatever it is that can be a really good way to connect yourself with the card um and anytime you get that card and you're stuck in the reading you just Take it back to that. I think right. Okay. Well, who do I who do I align that to? That that card is aligned to Gerald, right? Okay. What will Gerald do in this situation? Or do you know what I mean? Like that. I suppose that's just a, a something that I would say for anyone who is trying to gain a deeper yeah. understanding of them. Well, and Richie, because we we were talking about court cards, and one of the things that he said, if you were thinking about like the knights in particular, if you were thinking about four. Four, four lads out on the town. What would each one be wearing? How would they interact? What would they be drinking? What sort of clubs would they be going to? So, you, you know, it's that sort of thing. I, I love this idea of not using the traditional uh, court cards. I like the embodying of something else. Because then that way we can remove the the um, the binary understanding. Uh, um, because I, yes, the pages could grow into the queens, where the knights grow into the kings, or uh, evolve into that. I also look at it sometimes as is it's a progression. We have we have the page growing into the knight, growing into the queen, growing into the king. So, and well, and Robin brought up in the thought. Uh, it's the, it, the, the naming is different where it's the knight that is the, the top of the courts. Yeah. So. so in the Thoth, we have the princess, the prince, the queen, and the knight. Yes. And you're right, Donna, oh, three lads and one lassie, you mean? Yes. And, uh, three, three friends out on the town. We'll say that. So, so thank you, Earth Star One. I love it. My husband should be the the King of Cups, but he shows up in all my readings as the King of Pentacles. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and uh, 
And uh, Robin says, as I do open readings, there is no hierarchy in the court. All 78 cards have equal footing depending on the action they are taking. I think you are correct. Oh, and uh, Beth did say that's what Ethany's book does. Exercises to connect uh, the courts. That's cool. Nice. So, but yeah. All right. Um, great. Everybody have, I'm going to say um, farewell. Thank you all. It's been great to see everybody. Um, and, oh, Michelle Marie says, interesting, Jane, have your characters changed over time? For instance, when I was going through my divorce, I pulled the Queen of Swords instead of uh, uh, Wands. Interesting. So. What would you think about maybe pulling a wee card, but making it the first court card that comes up, Gerald? Say that again. Would you be okay if I was to do that? Yeah, go for it. Would you mind it. if I um, pulled a card to sum up the... Yeah. Um, Good night, Sharon. Thanks for being here. I'll find the... I'll go to the first court Ooh. card that we get. Knowing my luck, this is going to take its time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using this... Um, oh, there we go. Oh god, that, was, that that card really wanted to come up. Um, I'm using this um, Inner Dimensions tarot by Ash Groot um, mm -hmm. So the Master of Fire is what has come up, and we see so the, this person is kind of a holding lava in their hands. You know that, that well. That's what it looks like to me. You know uh -huh. this fire is is dripping out, and they're holding it in their hands. So the Master of Fire or the King of Wands. Um, I said this. I think I said this yesterday to Robin. Um, charisma. They embody the you know the, the idea of charisma. Um, the King of Wands is going to be someone who is not people are naturally drawn to. Um, they're going to be someone. So your King of Wands, more than any other court, um, for me, is, is someone who is where they are. That they're position in the court so the kingliness is at odds with their element a wee bit so the i'd said this earlier the kings are the um the social responsibility they're in charge of keeping order in the kingdom they are looking at the bigger picture but that that element of fire is like always wanting to get involved it's always wanting to get its hands dirty mm -hmm. it always wants to have a direct impact and uh -huh. the king maybe has a wee bit of a complex of if, if i if i want it done right i need to do it myself yes and this is a lesson that the king has the king of fire has more than any other as you need to trust people to do their job to do what they're meant to do um and you need to kind of a be able to take that. I mean, sure, like get involved if needed. You know, if that's what's needed to do in order to to maintain the kingdom, then by all means get involved. But your your job, your lesson, is to trust those knights and those pages and queens and whoever else it is to actually to do to do the job and get the work done and not feel like you always have to interject. Um, so they have that kind of a jewel that they, you know, they. They have the job to sit back and maintain that order, but they also like to get involved. Um, and I'm sure we can all think of areas in our life where we have that that that, that duality, where we have this kind of a responsibility, but we also we just want to jump in and get involved and get our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, it's getting the balance, really. Ultimately, it's about getting the balance between those two things. Um, so that's, I think, what our, maybe our message for the week might be. Um, as to, to find that balance between those two things. I love that. I was also having a thought is, is if we just number the minors one through 14, that removes mm -hmm. the, uh, that can remove some of the gender aspect there and uh, pay attention because if we're looking at an 11 and we reduce that down, that's a, that's a, um, what, um, it's a magical number, forget whatever. But then you reduce okay. the 11 down to two. I could see the two of a suit relating to the 11 of that suit. And okay. the three, uh, the, the, the 12 relating to the three, the 14 relating to the five. So anyhow, do any of you uh, now see pages as the fool and knights as the magician? 
Go on there, it's some tuition. Hmm. It, that's I'm an interesting to... thought. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I could definitely see how you know the, the you know the fill in the the pages. You might it might be tempting to link them together because you know the fill is that blank slate. It, it is that kind of a jumping into a whole new world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, if that works for you, then by all means. See, and I'm gonna uh, since uh, uh, some were saying queens as empress and high priestess, I get that. I think, uh, you know, and kings as emperors. Uh, you know, uh, okay, so Robin likes to do Toadstool, listen to me, Toadstool Tarot likes to do major arcana readings, major only. I'd like to do it with minors only. <laughs> so that's yeah. what Robin and I should do sometime. Robin, we should figure out a time. You're going to read majors only, and I'll only read minors, and we'll read together. Oh, okay. Right. So but interesting so and um pages may be seen as the fool with some direction maybe could be this is so so good so chris i was gonna say um you know thank you for being here 10 minutes ago <laughs> and robin I'm said sorry. i could do that and then i started yapping so no, um great. but no thank you so much for having me gerald oh it's I, been I, wonderful I, I'm amazing yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, this has been Tarot the Stashway number 13 or 23, revisiting the court cards. I mean, that is so awesome. So, yeah. So, can I right. go and shave now? I don't need to have this mustache anymore. <laughs> um, actually, you need to put some lotion on your mask and just, uh, you know, get some, get some more <laughs> curls on it. So, but, uh, oh, I was going to say, sounds like a head to head reading major versus minor. Oh, I love it. Head to head, majors versus minors tonight on Tarot Stash. <laughs> oh my God. Um, all right. We Robin will see. would love that. Robin, Robin would, would love, love that. He could that. probably make the music for it too. So, <laughs> all right. We're going to say good night. Um, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.